and we were back shooting at like 80, and I missed. We're actually shooting at 100. You're dating this younger girl, Jake. Just You're not single? dating her today? <laughs> Where were you? Here? Right, here. Right, here, right here. Right there. Oh, God. Ooh. <laughs> what do you like about that? Hit the weight room, man. I subscribe. You sure getting one. I don't have to keep filming. That's all I had to say. <laughs> Float them in the bathtub first and check check the spine alignment. A massive, massive boner. I'm gonna stand out of the way of it. <laughs> Damn. Just like your other theory we proved wrong today. Better keep that sound bite because uh, we debunked your mythical, mythological Zeus characteristics of Aeroflight V bar. I'm good. Everyone's got mics. mics on. Yep. Let the shit begin. I need to stand to stand closer to Tim so we can see. Well, I don't want your butt any closer to my nuts, son. I don't want my butt closer to you. Recording live at five. Tinkering check-in. Tinkering check-in with the squad. You're up first. Rope. Let's hear it. This is my first most important tinkering check-in. I lost this Trueball HBC Flex. This is my favorite all-time release. I like it because I can adjust this finger and it makes it a little easier to pull through the top. I also can adjust the hot and coldness. And I also spotted at Las Vegas Shoot, I spotted a few people shooting Trueball HBC Flexes. So the insecurity in me is like, hey, well, that's gotta be a decent release. It's just my favorite release that I found so far. Oh. Shooting this for 40. He's trying yeah. to get a sight tape established. Well, I think 35 was 50 last time, Why by the way. Why did you cut his arrow so long, man? I remember you shooting 35 for 50 last time we were here. So you better aim low. Were you aiming for that spot? That's like three inches high from where I was aiming. You can dial it in from there. Yeah, I'm good. Okay. Okay. Your thing, what is your thing? Is your thing? My like, thing's uh, teacher. My uh, leaving nasty comments on people's YouTube channels. I go, I do that once a day. I go find somebody, <laughs> get on their page. I let them have it. <laughs> Makes me feel good. You follow people just to just to troll them. I hardly follow. If I follow you, it's because uh, you're positive. You're spreading a good message. You're a hard worker. You make really good content, or you put a lot of effort into your content. Hey, did you have Joe Rogan follow you the other day? Yeah. It's crazy. Can he we give Joe a shout out and invite him to shoot arrows with us? I believe over a year ago, Tim said, hey, Joe Rogan subscribed to our YouTube channel, which is cool. And then just like a couple weeks ago, I saw Joe Rogan followed up me on Instagram, which is cool. It's an honor. I like Joe Rogan. Well, he's, he's done. done a lot for the archery hunting community. He gets that but YouTube's cool. I like that he likes YouTube. He does. He loves YouTube. Joe, if you ever want to shoot arrows deep downtown, crispy arrow flight, have some fun with the boys, talk a little smack. We would love to have you. We would love to have you. Plus, we can throw some kettlebells around in my uh, gym. Oh, you got kettlebells? The... Yeah, we got a few. <laughs> All right, my turn. You got two setups. I basically just built these arrows for this year. We've done videos on it. Rip TKO. My arrow. Podium, insert titanium. Weighs 50 grains, but you can add weight from the back. Podium. Fill point down here, AE hybrid HPs. Can you tell that they're ribbed? Yes, ribbed for her pleasure and they're max helical to the left. IP5 knocks, spine alignment, I like that. The first time I shot this group ever out of my bow was at 100 yards and I put four arrows like that and I'm like, wow. So they're grouping great. I haven't put a broadhead on them yet. This is probably what my arrow is gonna be this year. So total weight 427 FOC, just like 14.81% FOC or front of center. So it's good. I did just meet the guy Brent from Valkyrie looking at some of his stuff. I got to go reach out to him and have him send us a care package to tinker. What's different about this bow for you? Like, what are you looking at tinkering? So two big things, this rest, I've ran a ham ski rest for the last five years. This is a QAD integrated from Matthews. This is actually cable driven where I typically have ran off the limbs. That's one thing I'm gonna be tinkering with this year. I noticed you did not use the little football. You split the cable apart and slid through it. That's actually a tip that I got from Grimes at Spoken Valley Archery. I had the football on there and I hated it and I was asking about it. 
and that was his kind of tip and I like it. So we got it tied through there. We got it adjusted. One thing I do like so far is being able to lock this up and have the arrow in there ready to go. That mainly is gonna be like in a stand or in a blind. Please don't hit my arrow. I don't think that was the tape. <laughs> I think it actually was. Not your equipment. They're real good. That was way high. I pulled too many clicks, Jake. It's just like uh, your pin floats a lot on it. We're doing the world's most comprehensive string test. The quick and dirty is I got gas ghosts on this bad boy. We reached out to you guys. You told us what you wanted us to test and I'm running the A3 Bloodline fiber strings in a Viper color. They sent me these sweet green strings and it complements my little custom rattle can paint job here that you guys all love to love to love or love to hate. So you got ABB um, strings. Do you like ABB strings? This is the first time I've ever ran them. So I don't know if they're gonna hold up, if they're gonna last. I typically have ran um, Josh's strings from and did you clock, Podium. Did you clock your arrows? We did, they're spitting out the same way. So What is the same way? To the left. This is gonna be the year I wear out my first D loop. If we go top to bottom, I got the engaged leg limbs on the bottom, Matthew's bridge lock, stabilizers, 10 on the front, 10 on the back. That's what's available right now. I have two ounces on the front, two ounces on the back. I might add a third ounce on the back just cause my bow does tend to want to lean bubble right. So I might add a touch more weight here. Here's the problem I'm running to this year is this ABB string. I don't know if you guys can tell how much I got it twisted up right now. The, what, for whatever reason, this has felt long for me. Called ABB, actually Josh Jones did, and he ordered a, a, a string from my 33, a half inch shorter than spec. We're gonna put that on because I don't wanna run around with this twisted string. It could be a tuning nightmare. We're gonna see if I can really get and adapt this bow for hunting. I'm not gonna lie to you guys on YouTube. I can shoot the 33 better than the 29. Anything else here you're running? The, the V-bar? The sight. Oh, the sight you stole from me. Yeah, let's talk about the Dow sight that they sent me that you stole and I have not got a chance to use. Still, he gave it to me. He's running, he needs like a magnifier now. His eyes are getting bad. <laughs> so, <laughs> sight picture, the vertical with three is money. So I am really liking that. I don't have my sight tape on it yet. So far, so good. So the one thing I'm a little curious about is this locking mechanism here, the way that that is going to adjust and hold out in the field. So we're gonna be putting it to the test this elk season. I got these grips, which I really like. They actually keep me shooting on the riser. Elk-shaped grips coming up to the B3 Exact sight bar. It's got all the adjustments. It's clean, it's a clean rail. The only thing I don't like about the B3 is uh, it's slow. If I wanna crank from 20 to 100, let's put, the, let's put the clock on. How long is it going from 20 to 100? Play the music, man. B3, I like what you guys are doing. It would be cool if this had a quick rail adjustment. I am gonna try to haul around the 33 in the woods. I mean, if Tim and Jake are, great, but I do a ton of backpack elk hunting and this fits on the back of my backpack so much better than the 33. So I've always shot the, the shorter bows very well. I'm gonna have short draw length, but I really wanna try to give the 33 a full send this year. And in order to do that at 20, really my draw length is just under 27 if we're being honest. If we're splitting hairs, it's like 26.75. So we're gonna tinker and see if I can get this dope for me. And I'll probably run the 33 this year just because based on grouping and, and shot, this thing makes me feel like an all-star. It does, shoot, I shoot it better. But the 29 is always an option. That's what I ran all last year was the V3X29. Notice you're running the one piece. The, how it comes on and off your bow is really, really cool. So it Do you locks not in have tight. One, Tim? He doesn't I'm have a quiver. I'm it up because it's 3D season. He doesn't test for it's hunting? Did you see how I just took that off? <laughs> yeah. And yeah. do you see how I'm about to put it on? Well, I'll swap it over. I like, I like practicing for killing animals, not foam. Engage leg limbs, quarter inch peep. Okay, let's talk about arrows because that's really what people want to know. You're the one who's testing. These are pretty sick. So I have been shooting these for about two weeks now. And the one thing for me is you need to be able to stabilize a broadhead and it needs to be quiet. If I'm shooting an arrow and it's like shoo, screaming down range, like the animal's gonna get out of the way. I'll show you. Wow. Wow. Oh, this is so ABT. Real. Holy ABT. So these three, what I've been testing, these guys are going away. I'm gonna shoot that right there, which is a super saber. I am really liking those. What is it that, so you all shot them head to head. The, what were you noticing? The group. So what I did is I batched these up, made three of each. 
and I just shot over and over and over. And these are the tightest group and they're quiet. They're not loud. Instead of taking someone else's word for it, you tested it for yourself. 100%. Don't take our word for it. Go test it for yourself. That's a great job, Jake. I'm all about testing some new products for arrows for sure. And we're putting them through the ringer. So we're gonna test them and I like them. There we go. 279. Yep, you're good. 282 with the phase 429. Yep. <laughs> what do you like about that? Hit the weight room, man. Put the 75 mods on, Holmes. Let's see. That draw length, man, you should be like 285. What are you shooting? 60 pound mods? <laughs> These are 70 pound mods. No, they're not. Yeah. Is that Alicia's boat? I, I just want to know if you're watching this video and you always want to know how come Tim never has a quiver. He doesn't put his quiver on his bow and he doesn't have the Kafaro hip quiver and that's going to change. So today I'm going to order you one and I'm going to order somebody watching one, but you got to put a comment below. We'll pick one and we'll send you a Kafaro hip quiver. 282 with Jake's arrow. Okay. This will be good to see difference in weight versus difference in speed. Do you want to shoot my arrow? You, you can't, good luck. you can't. They're not long enough for you. I got the bridge lock, the V bar. I have mine very close to the string. I can put about, what, a fat Dan finger through there. Not much distance. I have three ounces on the back. I only have one ounce up front. That's pretty historical for me to kind of go very little weight in the front, a longer front bar. We've got the elk-shaped side plates. This is just the regular Epsilon Matthews edition. And then I have the landslide with the single pin. And if I do end up hunting with this durability wise, I hope this holds up, but I'm looking at switching the head to this four pin. This is a one off custom deal that I had to beg, borrow, steal, excel archery. So I don't think you can get that. Dan got lucky and they made one for him. That's what I would like to put on here for hunting if I can get this set up. I got the one piece from Matthews as well. I like the one piece, man. Josh was selling me hard on the I two piece. I love it. Cause if I'm in a blind, I can just take that off. Like or in a dude. tree stand, I can take that off and it doesn't, and it's just so tight to the riser. Everything is streamlined for shooting steep uphills and downhills. I hardly touch the riser when I shot, when I shoot. Gotta have that on and I always have the leg, engaged leg limbs always. This is a RIP TKO. This is Josh MFJJ's front component. So his titanium and his point. So I got 125 out front. This total arrow weight is 454, 300 spine. Give him the roast, full the guy, roast, heavy roast. No light roast, no light coffee. I don't, I don't complain, and I don't like throwing people under the bus at all. But, but this mother effer <laughs> snores so loud. I had to get my Beats headphones and like find some like rainfall music just to go to sleep. But in his defense, he was a little sick and it made it worse. It was like a bear. Other than that, he's a joy to travel with and hang out with all day long. And, and by the way, any of, any of you that stopped us and said, hey, we love your channel, we appreciate what you do. You have no idea how much your words of encouragement, like they mean the world to us. So thank you sincerely. The world's largest, freest archery tournament at Spokane Valley with MFJJ, with all the boys, you're invited. You're gonna unlock all the details once we get to 100,000 subscribers. Let's get there, help us out, hit the subscribe button. And we're looking forward to hosting one of the freest, largest, all the things, all the boys. It'd be amazing, help us get there. Hamski Epsilon, Matthew specific. I did this whole bow build myself, you guys. We'll link that video right up here, but this is the first bow I've ever built under the tutelage of MFJJ. Ultraville UV3 housing out front, top and bottom pin. I like that bottom pin as a bonus pin so I can shoot deep for, you know, our, our little 3D tour we go on. Custom paint job, courtesy of me. 33 is a no brainer for me and my draw length, 29 inches. I don't mind carrying it. My only hesitation for anyone to shoot a 33 would be like shorter draw length or maybe you're hunting in confined spaces. Excellent platform, especially anyone who's got like the 28 inch draw length or, or more. Oh, arrows, yeah, these are on the chopping block, guys. Arrows, rip TKO, 250 spines. The GPI on them is really light. Do you remember what it is, 8.1? 
8.9 GPI, that just allows a lot of flexibility with what you can do at the front of the arrow and get some good FOC. I really lean on Josh when it comes to how much FOC I want and stuff like that. Rip TKOs, what I've liked about them honestly is they fly true. And this coating on the outside keeps them pulling out of targets, which sounds kind of silly. But when you're shooting a lot of 3D stuff, like, and if you ever shot Easton Access into a shot up 3D target, maybe you didn't hit the center. You know what I'm talking about. It takes a lot to pull one of those out. So these pull out easy, they fly true. I've had these Silent Night SK2s on the back. They're stiffer. And every time I watch them fly in slow-mo, I'm, I'm pretty proud of how they're flying. So I don't see a lot of reason to change it up. I'm trying not to change my setup too much other than kind of some core items. And I just want to get good at shooting this old bow right here. I got this brand new fresh does of RIP TKO arrows that I'm kind of like, what am I going to do with them? So I want your input. I really like these. Front of the arrow, MFJJ's got new titanium inserts. Let me know what you think I should do with these arrows. They're still to be built. I love the 33 phase four. I think it might be the bow I shoot the best ever as far as just pure accuracy. If you see this and me on the mountain, there'll be no taking down Dan from Tim. You like that? Okay, let's move on. Cause this bow has already killed something. I shot a nice white tail in December with this bow. Engaged leg limbs, C-bar, very close to the string, but not too close. When we built this bow on the interwebs, I've gotten a few messages. We tied it in to this piece right here for the, the rest. I did not like that at all. So I immediately got the hamsky piece and put it back to how I usually do it. Again, I'm running the one piece again, so I can take it on and off for ground blind or tree stand. This is the uh, elk shape. Uh, edition, it's limited edition. So we do have those on the website. If you guys want to run, you'll see the little elk hunter on the side. And that means that you signed up for hard work because that's what we're selling. Look at, I have the triple stack in here. This is the one site that I feel like is the heaviest site ever made, but I do like three pin vertical profile, which has been awesome. I need to get my sight tape doped because I dropped from 433 to 427. I gotta just do a little bit of tinkering. If you notice, I took the top bracket off. You can take that off if you want. I just did it for loading arrows faster. I saw Jake do it and I wanna be like Jake. And then these are podium strings. These aren't gas strings. Josh did make these. Everything is pretty sweet on this bow. It's pretty doped. That's really the setup. I'm, I'm not gonna run. This is probably what I'm gonna run arrows wise. I really believe in rip TKOs. If I did drop to a Valkyrie system, which I haven't even tinkered, I'll probably do an SS, which is gonna be like your four millimeter TKO. I think they're called SS TKOs or something like that. Just like this, but in a four mil. And then I wanna look at that Valkyrie system that goes in, the shank goes in like the Snyder core from Iron Will, it goes all the way in. And then you'll have, you can have a collar, you can add weight and you can really bump your FOC up. I don't know if there's diminishing returns once you go out um, past 18% FOC, I, I kind of want to test it, but it's really hard for me to go past something like this that's worked really well for me. Uh, but I do like the looks of Valkyries. And when it comes to broadheads, I'm probably leaning towards running an iron wheel single bevel on elk. And then you guys know, I, I like to test and tinker on different species. I'm going to try that sever on a bear. I wouldn't mind trying a Valkyrie on another bear. We're just going to keep, oh, and the Exodus. I want to try the Exodus because we keep hearing about those. There's so many things to test for you guys and there's just not enough time.